it's likely that you've been exposed to absolute functions before. But let's just make sure we're familiar with these. Let's start with the basic linear relationship y equals x. And we'll even have a table for this. Now, let's add some absolute signs here. y equals the absolute of x. Recall that the absolute signs mean that anything within them comes out as a positive. Thus, when we solve for y and we have negative x's, they're switched to positives. The graph, therefore, now reflects vertically in this half, and we have a v. And this is our base graph for an absolute function. The point of the v is called our vertex. Now, one area of confusion with absolute graphs is that sometimes people are surprised when the relationship has an absolute sign within it, but it's existing below the x-axis. Now, this can happen. We just have to remember that the portion in the absolute sign is kept positive. Additions or subtractions or multiplications outside of the absolute sign have the ability to transform the relationship so that some or even all of the graph ends up below the x-axis. For example, if we stuck a negative in front here, well, then just like our polynomial relationships, the graph reflects vertically. Also, like the polynomials, we can shift the absolute graph up and down. We just put a number at the end here. And because it's outside of the absolute signs, can certainly shift the graph down or below that x-axis. 